Hi, my name is Fernando and I will be presenting on the success probability of solving unique SVP via BKZ. In our work, we investigate the cost of solving the learning with errors problem via lattice reduction. Our contributions are the following. We extend previous work by Alki Metal and Dagman Soled et al. to estimate the cost of low probability attacks. We experimentally verify the resulting model against Gaussian secrets, but also against uh, binary and ternary secrets and errors, as found sometimes in the literature. We will also explain some low probability attacks that have been reported in the previous literature by Albrecht et al. And we finally determine the effect that these low probability attacks could potentially have on security estimates for crypto systems. I will now present some preliminaries. We look in particular at the search variant of the learning with error problems, where there is a fixed secret vector S, uh, which coefficients have been sampled from some distribution and that has dimension N. And then we have an error vector E of dimension M, where the coefficients have also been sampled from some distribution. And usually the two distributions for S and E uh, are the discrete Gaussian. Then we have um, matrix A of uniformly sampled entries over ZQ. And we are given the tuple A and AS plus E modulo Q. And we are also given the task of recovering the secret S. One possible way of doing this is via the primal attack strategy, where we construct a lattice containing a target vector T, which is essentially a concatenation of the uh, vectors S, the vector E, and the vector and the number one. And we know that by construction, our lattice contains this as the unique shortest vector up to sign. Then we use lattice reduction to recover this unique shortest vector. Essentially, this is reducing the learning with errors problem to the unique shortest vector problem. Now, when looking at this strategy, there are two immediate questions. First is how do we go about costing the attack? And second is what happens if uh, we change some of the parameters? For example, if we change the probability distribution from which S and E are sampled. We now define some more useful objects. Given d linearly independent vectors, b1 to bd, uh, of dimension d, we say that these form a basis for the full rank lattice lambda, composed essentially of uh, the integer linear combinations of the vectors b. Given a basis, we can also run the Grunschmidt orthogonalization algorithm to obtain vectors that we denote as b star. And uh, now we define with these a basis profile, that is the set of the norms, or the square norms in this case, of our Grunschmidt orthogonalized vectors. Finally, we also define, given a basis, we define a projection operation pi that takes the basis and takes a index, and then essentially maps any vectors in a d-dimensional space onto the orthogonal subspace uh, that is orthogonal to the first, in this case, uh, the first k minus one vectors in our basis. Given a lattice basis and a reduction algorithm A, it is possible to predict the resulting basis profile for a, a reduced basis. There are two ways of doing this. The first is the geometric series assumption uh, that states that for every algorithm A, there is some uh, coefficient alpha between zero and one, such that if we use that algorithm to reduce a basis, its uh, profile is going to be in a geometric series with alpha as the uh, multiplicative coefficient. The other way instead is to use an algorithm specific simulator, such as the BKZ simulator by Chen and Nguyen, which can predict the effect of running multiple tours of the uh, reduction algorithm on the given basis, and then it predicts the profile uh, of the basis output after these uh, tau tours, let's say. Now, I mentioned um, tours of BKZ, and we will see that these are the main step in lattice reduction algorithms that we will be analyzing in, in this work. So uh, I now talk briefly about 
um, what a BKZ tour is. On the left, you can see a pseudocode describing what a BKZ tour does. And on the right, you can see a basis profile for a certain lattice. Essentially, on the right, we're plotting on the x-axis the index of the basis vector. And then on the y-axis, we are plotting a log plot of the norm of its um, Gram-Schmidt vector. What a BKZ beta tour does is that we first look at the first beta coefficients in the lattice basis. And we look at an uh, orthogonal projection of the um, lattice spanned by those uh, vector, basis vectors. And it calls a, a shortest vector problem oracle that is able to solve exactly the shortest vector problem in this uh, sublattice. Then, if it finds a vector that is shorter than what was before, it will insert that vector at the beginning of this uh, local block uh, of dimension beta. And then we will run some, it will run some LLL to remove some linear dependencies. And then we move our attention down to the right. Um, and essentially we'll repeat this process on the next beta coefficients uh, that will be overlapping. Uh, uh, Oracle for solving the shortest vector problem is called and um, uh, then a shortest vector is found and is inserted at the beginning of this local block. And this is uh, repeated multiple times. And as it's repeated, we can see that the lattice basis profile is uh, changing and somewhat its slope is uh, growing uh, a little bit. And then we get to the end of the basis. And at that point, it is not possible to keep moving to the right. Uh, and so instead, one uh, reduces the dimensionality of the projective sublattice that is being uh, searched for short vectors. Now, after enough tours are run, the basis profile will start to converge to what the geometric series assumption predicted for, uh, for our lattice and for our algorithm. Here, for example, we can see in blue the um, basis profile of our radius basis. And in orange, we can see that almost exactly below the blue line, we can, uh, the GSA had already predicted that uh, this was uh, the, going to be the basis profile output by BKZ. Now, the BKZ beta tour, as we said, is a fundamental component of uh, blockwise lattice reduction. And from it, we can define two different algorithms. First, we have BKZ beta, where in, uh, in our definition, we run a fixed number of tours, tau, using uh, a fixed block size beta. The other algorithm is progressive BKZ, where we run BKZ uh, tours with an increasing block size. Again, we have an input parameter tau, and basically this says for every block size starting at three, run tau tours of BKZ beta. Now, if we were trying to use one of these two algorithms as part of the primal attack, uh, we would not necessarily wait for the two algorithms to naturally return, but rather after every BKZ beta tour, we would check if uh, we were able to find a solution to the learning with errors instant that we're trying to solve. Now, uh, going back to our question, we are trying to see what the cost of solving the learning with errors problem is. So our objective, as a reminder, is to recover this vector t uh, inside the lattice. And in practice, um, the recovery of t follows directly from recovering an orthogonal projection of t during a BKZ beta tour. Now, uh, the analysis for this uh, was done by Alkim et al. Um, in the New Hope paper. And essentially, the idea is, since recovery of t follows from recovery of this projection, um, and recovery of this projection requires all the vectors in the basis to be taken account for, this will uh, most likely happen when we are running the um, SVP oracle over the last beta indices of our basis after it reached um, almost the GSA, the geometric series assumption profile. 
So really what we're doing is if we want to solve um, the problem, we want this projection to be the shortest vector in that uh, subspace. Therefore, what we have to do is estimate the length of a projection of the shortest vector. And then uh, we estimate what the lattice um, basis profile is going to be after reduction. And we try to choose a block size that here we denote by uh, beta star to mark it as the, um, as the prediction done using this model. We choose a beta star such that the projection of our target vector is uh, shorter than what, more, what the GSA says that we will find at that index in the basis. And if it is, the SVP oracle will essentially recover this projection and place it into our basis, and this will lead to recovery of the full secret vector. This approach by Alkim et al. was originally experimentally verified in Albrecht et al. in 2017. What the authors do is uh, they set up for various secret dimensions uh, some L search LW instances, and then they uh, look for what is the um, predicted optimal block size for solving the LW problem using the alchemical analysis. And then they try to solve the problem by using the primal attack strategy. And indeed, in this table, we can see on the top row that if one chooses exactly the optimal block size, um, one is then able to recover the um, LW solution with very high probability. However, they also observed that if one were to choose a less than optimal block size that the theory would not uh, directly predict to be successful, it is still possible uh, with a relatively high success probability to recover a solution to the LW problem. Now, uh, in this table, we show uh, their results where the gap between the block size and uh, the optimal block size beta star was uh, 5, 10, or 15, relatively small. Um, however, it is not a priori clear whether this gap could increase as the secret dimension increases. If that uh, were the case, one could uh, imagine that for cryptographically sized parameters, uh, maybe bigger gaps still allow for, um, for high probability attacks. And this, of course, could be a problem because the shortest vector oracle used inside the BKZ beta tour is the main component of complexity in the attack. And this complexity is exponential in the block size. So reducing the block size too much would lead to a significantly cheaper attack. Our main contribution in this paper is to extend work by Alkim et al, by Darkman Saled et al, to predict exactly uh, these success probabilities for lower than expected block size. Essentially, what we do is that we try to simulate uh, the probability of solving the unique shortest vector problem instant that is part of the primal attack strategy as we would be reducing the lattice basis. So here, more or less what we're doing is we're taking a description of an LWE instance, and then we're starting to account for the probability of having solved it so far. So we say, okay, we're running tau tours of BKZ. So for a one to a tau, we will first simulate what the what a BKZ simulator, such as the one in Chen and Nguyen, um, predicts our basis profile is going to be at this point in time. And then we are essentially looking at the probability that if we're um, at this point where we still have not reached uh, what the geometric series assumption assumes to be the state of a reduced basis, what is the probability that we are able to uh, recover the projection of the target vector t that would lead to a solution? And this can be done by computing the probability that such projection is the shortest vector um, in the local block that is being uh, reduced at that moment. And what we do is we essentially model these, uh, the, the square norm of these projections to be um, essentially a chi-square distribution that is scaled to match the variance of the LWE secret distribution. Then what we do is that we essentially accumulate the uh, probabilities of having indeed found uh, 
uh, this um, this short projection. And uh, and we move on to the first step again in the loop, where we assume okay, uh, if uh, if we have not found yet uh, the target the shortest vector, we will run another tour. And so we will again use the BKZ simulator to see what the state of the basis is going to be at the end of the second tour. We will compute the probability of winning at the second tour, and we will accumulate it, and so on for all tau tours. Finally, we return the um, what is essentially the probability of solving LWE with a block size uh, beta um, or smaller. For progressive BKZ, the idea is exactly the same but um, we are increasing beta um, as the tours go. And we do, um, we simulate tours happening until the, the probability of solving LWE is essentially one. There is here a, um, a gotcha in the fact that we are assuming that uh, these probabilities that we are uh, uh, accumulating are for uh, independent events. And indeed, this is um, this seems to be enough the case because um, the BKZ tools are not just looking for this um, projection of the target vector, but they're also re-randomizing the basis. And so, uh, although there are some exceptions that we address in the paper, overall this seems to be a valid uh, simplification. Next, we run experiments to verify whether our, our algorithms that we call uh, USVP simulators um, are successfully able to predict um, the probability of uh, solving LWE given a certain block size and a certain algorithm. How we went about it is that we chose um, LWE parameters that were expected to require a block size of around 60 to be solved. Uh, where we assume LWE to be parameterized such that the secret and the error terms are uh, sampled from a Gaussian distribution with a certain standard deviation sigma. In this table, we summarize the parameters that we used. And we also show what the expected uh, successful block size would be if we were to follow the alchemetal analysis. Then we decided to uh, uh, study mainly two batches of experiments. In some, we kept uh, we use a discrete Gaussian distribution to sample error in secret. And uh, in the other set, we decided to instead try to uh, attack binary uh, instances of LWE that have either binary error in secret or ternary error in secret. Because we, want so we wanted also to see if uh, uh, this analysis holds in those cases where the distribution is much more concentrated uh, than in a discrete Gaussian case. And indeed, what we do is that um, we reuse the same parameters for the secret dimension the same, and the same Q, and we observe that a ternary secret distribution uh, will have standard deviation square root of two thirds, just like we have chosen uh, for the discrete Gaussian case in the case of uh, secret dimension 100, and a centered binary distribution that we describe in the paper has a standard deviation one just like we had uh, chosen for smaller than 100 secret dimensions. And so this will allow us to compare directly the cost of solving LWE with a discrete Gaussian secret and error or with a binary or ternary secret and error. And we would like to uh, point out that the USVP simulators are not able to see the difference. Both rely essentially on, uh, on the standard deviation of the secret and error distribution. And so they should uh, both be able to predict the same hardness for the two different problems. We also run multiple other variants of these experiments. Uh, we will now look at some results, but more can be found in the paper. First, we're going to look at Gaussian error in secret when we reduce the basis using BKZ and progressive BKZ. These are um, Lots of plots, but they are essentially the same plot repeated for different secret dimension. Um, and what we are sh showing here is um, for uh, BKZ run only for five tours, or only for 10 tours, or only for 15 tours. And for progressive BKZ, um, where every block size is used once, we um, printed in a dashed line what the uh, 
USUP simulator predicts to be the uh, success probability of solving LWE uh, with the algorithm and with a block size that is uh, smaller or equal than beta. On the x-axis we have beta and on the y-axis we have this probability. Then the crosses are the experimental uh, frequencies with which these algorithms are able to solve LWE. Uh, from what we can see, the uh, simulators are able to relatively well predict the fact that this probability will not go uh, instantly from 0 to 1 at uh, exactly uh, the expected value of beta, but rather that they grow. And it also uh, successfully predicts the fact that it's more likely uh, to solve LWE using uh, 15 tools of BKZ rather than just using 5 tools of BKZ. On the other hand, if one wanted to only run 5 tools of BKZ, we um, would need a larger block size to reach the same uh, success probabilities. Then we look at the case of binary and ternary error in secret. Uh, we will just plot um, progressive BKZ here for simplicity, and we plot three different cases of progressive BKZ where every block size is used once or five times or 10 times. Here we can see again that uh, the predictions from the USVP simulator seems to uh, more or less match what we find experimentally. And that is that the probability of winning without certain block size or smaller grows um, as the expected block, block size is approached and does not just go immediately, of course, from 0 to 1. Um, something interesting, of course, is that uh, the dashed lines, which are the predictions, are not aware of the fact that the secret is uh, binary or ternary, uh, but rather they are only aware of the standard deviation of the distribution from which the secret and error were sampled. Therefore, it would look like that um, ignoring possible combinatorial attacks, like in the case of the hybrid attack, if one were just to uh, pick a binary, say, learning with error instance, and try to run the primal attack without uh, exploiting the fact that the error is binary in any sort of uh, combinatorial way, then the hardness seems to be the same as if the learning with error instance had a discrete Gaussian uh, error and secret with a variance matching that of a binary distribution. Now, we would like to look at one particular case of an effect that was somewhat disturbing our predictions. Here, the plot that we're seeing is a similar plot. On the x-axis, we have uh, the block size, and on the y-axis, we have the probability of solving uh, LWE with a, a smaller or equal uh, block size to beta. And in this case, we're looking at um, secret dimension 72, which is the smallest that we use. Um, and we're using progressive BKZ to solve some Gaussian um, LWE instance. And uh, we can notice that although generally the prediction by the USVP simulator seems to be located around um, what the experiments find, lots of experiments seems to be succeeding at solving the problem with significantly lower block size um, on the left. And also that some experiments um, seem to have a lower than expected success probability on the top right. We believe we found a cause for this discrepancy and that the cause is essentially the effect of sample variance. Now, when we are given a, a LWE uh, instance to solve, we're essentially building uh, this um, um, lattice basis that contains, as we said, a target vector T uh, which is being sampled from a certain distribution. Um, and in our case, um, we had this distribution be the secret, the secret and the error distribution. For example, a Gaussian distribution with variance 1. Then the coefficients of t are essentially um, identically and independently distributed uh, coefficients sampled from this Gaussian. Um, now, while the Gaussian theoretically has variance 1, in practice, we're only given a finite amount of samples from this distribution, um, which are the coefficients of the target vector. And uh, these coefficients, um, we have a certain sample mean, which is the uh, mean of the coefficients, the mean value of the coefficients. And also, we can define something called the sample variance of uh, these coefficients. 
that uh, essentially plays the role of uh, the variance of the distribution that the coefficients were sampled from, in that we expect it to be the same. However, given a particular instance, not necessarily it will be the case that the sample variance exactly matches the variance of the secret distribution. And um, since the projections of the target vector really depend on the sample variance, because the target vector has been sampled already when it's uh, given to us in the form of a learning with error instance, our simulations will be off if the sample variance is not, um, is not close to the variance of the secret distribution. To verify this theory, uh, that is that the sample variance um, being off causes our predictions to be off as well, we decided to rerun these experiments, but we um, specifically uh, tried to sample instances of uh, LWE where the sample variance was at most 2% off from the variance of the secret and error distribution. This way, we know that uh, the sample variant would not differ, and so our predictions uh, for the projections of uh, the target vector should match. What we can see in this plot is that indeed, for the same predictions, once the sample variant is controlled, the success probability significantly better matches our predictions. A good note about this is that, while it might seem artificial to limit the LW instances only to uh, quote-unquote good LW instances where the sample variance is close to the standard deviation, the sample variance itself has a variance that decreases with the dimension of the problem. And so really for uh, cryptographically sized instances, we don't expect the sample variance to deviate significantly from the variance of the secret and error distributions. Finally, we use the uh, USVP simulators to also explain the success probabilities reported in uh, Albrecht et al. And indeed, we can see that our simulator seems to explain why for some slightly smaller block sizes, uh, we could see non-negligible success probabilities with BKZ. Having uh, found a way of predicting the success probability that smaller than optimal block size will have, we could now wonder what its impact will be on the uh, security estimates for lattice-based cryptographic protocols. Here we are looking at a table that contains uh, some estimates that we run for the three finalists, chem finalists, from the post-quantum cryptography standardization process run by NIST. What we did is we took the parameters available at the time of writing, that is the parameters from the second round of these schemes, and we uh, use the LWE estimator script to find what is the um, block size predicted using the uh, methodology by Alkim et al, that is beta star, and we report it here on the leftmost column. And then we decided uh, to use our USVP simulators to see whether uh, what is the expected successful block size uh, if uh, instead we were to use a BKZ uh, 2.0 with 15 tours, or if we were to use progressive BKZ with either one or five tours um, for every block size. And these are the um, numbers. Now uh, you can see that actually all these numbers uh, appear to be larger than the successful block size predicted using the Alchemetal methodology. And uh, this result was already found uh, for uh, some other schemes by Dachman, Soled et al, where um, their scripts were essentially just recovering this expected successful block size, and also these seem to be larger than what the Alchem et al methodology um, originally predicted. But then since we are extrapolating um, somehow the full probability distribution of uh, the successful block size of solving LWE. We can also look at what is the standard deviation of the successful block size. What we can see here is that the standard deviation stays relatively small, even for uh, cryptographically sized parameters. Um, and throughout, it seems never to reach uh, a value of four, for example. 
So uh, summarizing, we see that actually the expected successful block size is larger than in Kimetol, and that this, uh, the variance of this successful block size stays relatively small. Now, both obs observations should be good news. The fact that the variance stays small means that a successful block size cannot be significantly uh, smaller than the expected successful block size. That is, that if we were to choose something significantly smaller, we would uh, very quickly incur in an attack that has essentially uh, zero success probability. So it should not be possible to run low probability attacks by just saying, let's pick a much smaller, a much smaller block size. Then on the other hand, the fact that the expected block size is larger than predicted before uh, means that the Alchemetal methodology underestimates the hardness of uh, the learning with error problems. And this is good news because it means that uh, previously choosing parameters uh, should still be secure against the primal attack, but it, uh, it is a little bit counterintuitive because these USVP simulators are essentially accounting for the success probability of smaller than optimal uh, or than previously predicted block sizes. So how is it possible that the expected block size is, uh, is growing overall? Now, uh, we believe that we have identified why this expected block size is growing. Um, and this is not really caused by the USVP simulation, but rather it's used by the fact that internally uh, we're not using the geometric series assumption, but we're using a BKZ simulator. Um, so just to recap here and, ex and, and show this effect, here we are looking at the um, at part of the um, basis as the GSA profile predicted, predicted for Kyber 512. Uh, and in red, we have the GSA line that we saw before, while in purple, we have the uh, logarithm of the expected norm of the um, target vector during the attack. Now, what uh, the Alchemetal methodology does is to say, let's find the point of intersection between these two lines, and we choose beta, the block size, um, such that it reaches from the uh, end of the basis to this intersection. However, since we're not using the uh, geometric series assumption, the line uh, for the predicted uh, reduced basis profile is slightly different, and it's the one predicted by the Chen and Nguyen BKZ simulator. Uh, with this line, if we uh, were to look at the intersection between um, the basis profile and the purple line that represents the norm of the projections of the target vector, this intersection has moved to the left. And so choosing the block size um, using the simulator output uh, will lead to bigger uh, block sizes. Now, this effect will carry then to our USVP simulator and similarly to the code by Dachman Soled et al. Um, simply because the GSA is never directly considered and instead uh, simulations are always done. This should then explain why the expected block size reported by uh, this work is bigger than that by uh, reported by uh, the LW estimator, which internally uses uh, the alchemical methodology and hence the geometric series assumption. In conclusion, in our work, we capture the success probabilities of smaller than expected successful block sizes. And uh, we show a methodology that allows us to predict uh, these probabilities. The effects seem to be uh, consistent across a secret and error distribution. So we also uh, show that uh, using a binary or alternative distribution does not directly impact the uh, cost of the primal attack without any extra combinatorial step. Finally, uh, we showed that uh, the even accounting for the uh, low success probability block sizes, overall the hardness of uh, the learning with error problems does not seem to be uh, significantly impacted. More details and uh, many more experiments can be found on our ePrint, and also the code and the data used uh, for producing all the plots, uh, and also the code for the USVP simulators can be found on GitHub. Thank you very much for your attention.